Microsoft's making changes to Windows updates, Apple's going a little bit ARM, and you've got a lot of gaming questions. What's up, everybody? It is the end of March, but before we dive in, today's show, or today's podcast, I should say, is brought to you by Microsoft 365 in the modern workplace. You can find links down in the description below to learn about how Microsoft is enabling productivity in the workplace, and uh, there's a lot of good stuff happening on, on that side of the coin. But back on the news side, there's been it's been an interesting week, obviously, because of all of the stuff that is going around, a lot of people working from home, self-containment, and all that good stuff. There are a couple headlines, but primarily going to focus on the questions this week. One one thing to point out is that Microsoft announced yesterday that they, that they bought Affirmed Networks. This is a 5G kind of infrastructure services company on the back end, and it's going to help Microsoft deliver its cloud to its customers and potential uh, clients here in the near future with using 5G technology. Obviously, 5G is still in its early phases of being rolled out. Uh, there's millimeter and, and various flavors of it, but Microsoft is now officially getting in on the action. It's a little interesting because Nokia, or what remains of Nokia, was trying to sell its 5G assets, although I think that was more strictly tied to the hardware side and not necessarily the software side. Um, but, you know, there you go. Microsoft bought a firm networks. Microsoft is also announcing that they are pausing optional updates to Windows 10. I believe this is not going to take place for several weeks. And the gut check here says that, hey, this is primarily going to affect uh, or impact, I should say, the next release of Windows 10. Microsoft and other companies around the globe are trying to do their part to reduce the strain on the backbones of the internet, reducing uh, YouTube is like throttling down uh, the, the bit rate, same with Netflix and a bunch of other companies. And it sounds like Microsoft Microsoft is going to be doing the same thing, but the idea here is probably with the the next version of Windows, which is a hefty download. Now, if you're worried about security updates, that's not a big deal. Microsoft is going to continue that. This is only for option optional uh, updates or feature updates going forward, at least for the time being. So you still get your security, just not the feature updates are not going to be coming down uh, quite yet. Also, Zoom has been making a lot of headlines. Uh, we've been using it personally here in our household a little bit, but Zoom is a very easy to use video communication application. It has basically exploded in popularity in the app stores. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it is sending data to Facebook. If you really don't like Facebook, and I completely understand why, uh, don't use Zoom because regardless of what settings you'd enable, even if you don't log in with a Facebook account or have anything to do with Facebook, it's still sending your data over to Facebook regardless of your personal choices. And so that is just something to keep aware of uh, for on the privacy side of life. Apple is also expected to be launching ARM-related devices next year in 2021. That has been uh, that's coming out of a, 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 res a respectable source, I should say, uh, out of those analyst notes. The idea here is that Apple is obviously going to upscale or upstream its ARM processors. They've been using them in their phones, in their iPads, and their Apple TVs, and it makes sense that they're going to be going to their upstream products, reducing their in basically reliance on Intel at at some capacity. Now there were rumors that there was going to be a device launching later this year. The first device with an ARM chip inside. We will see uh, how Apple approaches this. Obviously, Apple takes their, their, their sweet time on some of this, but they've been building A series chips for quite a while now. And so they've gotten quite good. Uh, if you can go look at their latest iPad Pro for some of the performance characteristics. And so uh, there's not a big performance concern. It's going to be more interesting to see what software they run. I've, they are going to be running on these devices when they do ship. Uh, one last minor note on the Microsoft side, by the way, if you have been chasing the certifications that were going to expire or be sunsetted in June, Microsoft is now extending those for several more months. So you have uh, additional time to get those certifications if that is on your agenda. So uh, we're going to dive into the questions this week. Just a bunch of them came in, a lot of them gaming related, and most of the gaming news came out last week. So we are going to dive in in here. Side Choker says, hi Brad, is Home Hub still in the making? Because Windows 10X would be great for it. And with the upcoming Microsoft 360 Life, it would be great for, it would be a great package. Um, interesting. So there was this idea of a Home Hub interface that is exactly that. It's kind of like your daily snapshot allows you to interact with things on your calendar, communicate um, with your, with your close family. I don't know if it is still in development because at Microsoft at Microsoft at one point had a device that was designed for the kitchen that was going to be the evolution of its Cortana setup where uh, it was effect. Think of like an, an Echo Show, I believe they're called, with the Amazon device with a screen. It was going to be that, but I believe Microsoft has abandoned plans to ship that product. So I don't know if that thing is still on the agenda. Uh, and he says, a side question, what do you think about a Surface smartwatch? Well, I wear a smartwatch every single day. It's the Apple whatever one uh, I'm wearing. 
I, I would be interested in it, right? Microsoft has, they would have to approach it carefully because first off, um, they've already tried to do something like that, right? They had the band. Um, now, I'm not saying they wouldn't ever do it because they're now building, uh, well, the, the earbuds, although that we still don't have a shift date for those. They do have a lot of peripherals in the Surface family. It would tie nicely into the ecosystem, but I think that it would have to have native, uh, like, capabilities to connect to cellular networks right because microsoft doesn't have a mainstream device that people carry around that is connected granted it could potentially just latch on to the ios or android ecosystem but you're not going to get as good of experience on ios um, as you would say the apple watch i would be personally interested in it. i'd be curious to see what they would come up with but i'm not holding my breath that this is actually something going to happen um uh, let's see da -da 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 -da. uh Ian Yates says, uh, Outlook desktop client and Teams had a feature announced and others this week where I could have an email in Outlook and then click a button and get that email in Teams. Microsoft said it'd be out, but I can't see it. Despite me seeing the feature they added to Teams that takes things, da, 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 I can't take the thread email any online. Any news on this? So he's talking about how Microsoft is bringing Outlook and Teams closer together and being able to move email threads across platforms. Um, so here's the thing. Microsoft will announce features and, and make them available in your tenant, but the feature isn't actually connected all on the back end. So Unfortunately, you kind of just got to wait this one out. I'm experiencing this right now with our tenant where we don't, we have Skype Federation turned on, but Skype Federation isn't actually working because it's not enabled on the back end. So Microsoft is very good at putting the features available, like Placuto available, like where you can see them, but they're not always enabled on the, the backside, but they will be there. So just give it some more time, I believe is the issue. PK Driven says, Hi Brad, hope you're safe during these crazy times. Always appreciate it. Have you heard anything about HP Valve, Microsoft Next Gen VR headsets? Well, they are working on one, right? We know that they're coming. Microsoft actually has a VR, well, they, I should say, they previously had VR days scheduled. They were going to do something, remember, at um, uh, Mo Mobile World Conf Congress, and then they announced something right before build. And now I don't know where all this stands because of, of everything that's going on in the world. And obviously build has been gone to a virtual and I'm assuming that they're probably gonna be doing that. Um, there is a post on the site about Microsoft um, and, and everybody working on that. I don't know if Microsoft is going to be releasing a like, people keep asking is Microsoft gonna release a native uh, VR headset that is gonna work across the PC and the next generation Xbox. I think we're a little early on the next generation Xbox stuff and they don't want to muddy those waters with really anything else. Now, to be clear, the next generation Xbox Series X is has the raw performance to support VR experiences. Now, what I mean by that is that if Microsoft so choose, they could very easily enable it. I don't know if they are doing that yet. So don't run with the headlines that Microsoft is building VR experiences. The device is capable of it. Whether or not they decide to enable those is two totally different things. Uh, his other question says, also any new info on the Surface Book 3? I'm seeing reports of both AMD and CPU and GPU combos. Uh, also a new book with the latest, greatest Intel. Um, so here's the things that I have heard on the Surface Book 3 is that it's gonna favor Intel. I have not heard that AMD is going to be part of the Surface Book 3. I'm not saying it will ever or next generation it won't. Um, my personal uh, insights say, hey, it's gonna be an Intel-based product, so. There you go. Uh, Will says, I was I was talking with a friend that mentioned that Bluetooth 5.0 is just as good as the Xbox wireless protocol. And I'm curious if this is true and why next, uh, and why the next Xbox would not adopt Bluetooth for things such as AirPods and Surface headphones. Why restrict people to just Xbox only peripherals? Well, there's a couple reasons here. One, first off, is, is Bluetooth 5.0 as good as what Microsoft currently uses for connectivity to the Xbox? Uh, it potentially, right? It's hard to compare uh, Bluetooth 5.0 with what is currently used on the Xbox One series because that stuff is quite dated at this time. Now, next generation stuff, There's a, the reason why Microsoft isn't using Bluetooth 5.0, per my understanding, is that they prefer to have complete control over the spec, right? If you take Bluetooth 5.0, which could honestly be part of what Microsoft is using, but you hack it up so that it works best with controllers, then it's no longer Bluetooth 5.0. It's, it's a derivative, it's not the same thing. Microsoft has their own protocols because they are focused more on low latency than say 
than say battery life, right? They want the absolute best performance because these are extremely low latency sensitive environments when you use things like controllers. Now, now why wouldn't they use Bluetooth 5.0 in conjunction? There could be a lot of reasons why. Cost could be very uh, explicitly one. Two, Microsoft makes a lot of money off of peripherals, right? If they just open up the Xbox Series X to Bluetooth generic 5.0 products, that means then they can't then they're not going to make the same amount of money selling um, Xbox related products for the device. I think it's very much a part of the business model is that they need to be able to monetize those third party accessories and first party accessories to the device and Bluetooth mitigates that uh, functionality. So I think that's partially why I think it's partially, I don't want to say greed because Microsoft probably is going to be taking a loss on these consoles, but it's definitely factored into the business model of how they're going to make the Xbox platform sustainable. Uh, Avarota says, uh, Dell seemed to push out a substantial update to Dell Mobile Connect app for Windows 10, which offered a lot of options for iOS. Unfortunately, this app only seems to work best with Dell products. When does Microsoft plan to catch up to your phone and challenge Dell on iOS functionality? So he's exactly right. So Dell released its mobile, an update, I should say, to its Mobile Connect application that allows you to mirror your iOS device on Windows 10. Now, Microsoft's own your phone realistically only works with Android devices. Yes, it technically works with iOS, but the, the functionality is basically nothing. And so here comes Dell with a better superior product. I'll be very curious to see how long it takes Microsoft to effectively copy this feature. What we don't know yet is if Dell somehow got permission from Apple to enable this functionality or they work together to do this. That is the big unknown at this time because Microsoft obviously would love to bring this to your phone, but Dell is clearly leading the way. So if you want the best iOS Windows 10 integration, candidly, you need to get the Dell Mobile Connect. Now, I will say that you can run that application if you get your hands on it on a non-Dell device, but currently right now, the easiest way to do that is to have a Dell product and just download that from the store. Uh, Tourniquet says, Hi Brad, Microsoft talked a lot about latency, especially regarding its new controller. I just bought a new Elite controller. What does this mean for me? To enjoy low latency, I would buy a new normal controller or will this be some kind of firmware upgrade? So what I have understood, first off, your Elite V2 Elite Series to controller will absolutely work on the next generation controller. I believe Microsoft even said all current generation controllers will absolutely work. We knew that, but what I mean by I believe Microsoft said is that they're gonna be updating the firmware so that all Xbox existing controllers will be updated with a new firmware that will then support the lower latency input features of the next generation console, which is a very consumer friendly move. So you can take your existing controller, you're probably gonna have to plug it in uh, to your device and then it will update and then you will get those new features that would allow it to work with the Series X. I believe they did say that, so there you go. Uh, Bart says, yesterday, March 26, Microsoft announced the acquisition of Affirm Network, a company that provides visualized cloud uh, native mobile network solutions. What's the likelihood of Microsoft launching a Google Fi competitor extremely low? I, I am not expecting that in the slightest. This is a, an infrastructure Azure backend data connectivity play. It's a smart move considering where 5G is headed, uh, but I'm not expecting like a, a Google Fi type service. Uh, oh, geez. Uh, Clean Slate says... Hey, Brad, Microsoft is doing amazing things with Flight Simulator Flight Simulator 2020. I cannot talk. Uh, do you know if any of their studios are incorporating cloud technology in their upcoming games? Um, so first off, Flight Simulator 2020 is doing amazing things. It's a, it's a beautiful game. Uh, I will absolutely say that. I don't know... I know that there are companies that are using cloud technologies for their next generation games, but that, but saying that you're using cloud technologies for the next generation or upcoming games is such a nebulous thing. If you store data in the cloud, technically you're using cloud data. So to, I think the better way to phrase that is to what extent are companies using next generation titles? Um, we haven't heard explicitly yet. I did hear of one title that is going to be trying to do more it's along the same vein of what Flight Simulator was doing, but more atmospheric um, type environments, and it's for Battle Royale type simulations. Now, I don't know if that, it was more of like a demo or like a proof case of what can be done, but imagine a game playing like Call of Duty Modern uh, Warfare, the war zone, and actually having the weather environments mimic the place on the planet where it actually is. So let's say you're playing a map that's Hawaii, and then it would actually be the weather that's in Hawaii. So I don't know if that is going to be like shipping in a retail game, but that was definitely demoed as a potential solution for making your games more dynamic uh, at, to developers. So, uh, and then says also, do you know any plans from Microsoft to expand their Xbox services to more countries? If you have a specific country, I can probably ask. 
that I can try to help with. I don't know of, I don't know which servers you're talking about and where, um, but I do know that Microsoft, they'll probably tell me a generic answer of, hey, we're always trying to expand things to different countries, um, but there you go. Uh, Kurt J says, do you know that the Lockhart, uh, do you think that the Lockhart could be just under the PS5 spec, but also diskless system for further cost reduction? I've been asked a lot if I think it's diskless. I have a lot of mixed opinions. I don't know explicitly if it is diskless, but the the reason why I struggle to say that Microsoft would do this is that the diskless console for Microsoft hasn't sold extremely well. Um, it's sold, right? And it's helped Microsoft lower that price point ever so slightly, but it hasn't been a huge home run. Now, I completely agree that a diskless system makes sense. I can almost promise you that for the Series X, I will probably never buy a disk-based game. My Xbox One X, the last game i don't even know what the last disc based game to, oh i know what game maybe ace no it wasn't even ace combat 7 um I, I can't even tell you what the last disc based game was i bought i am perfectly fine with a discless system i know that is not the rule for everyone i'm, I'm fully aware of that will microsoft do that for locker potentially i think if they were going to do it that is where they would they would push the focus but there's a big but here microsoft knows that if they have a a lower priced series s console that that console is going to sell in a higher volume than the series x series x is going to be a lower volume um, higher skew product that's just the nature of it. if you offer two SKUs, almost always the lower priced console will sell better so will they take the risk and make that a discless console i don't think that they will because that is going to be the more mass market personally speaking i think that they would be more likely maybe to make the series x uh discless just because the hardcore gamers probably downloading all their games digitally and there you go uh, but i don't i don't personally think that the lockhart will be um will be discus i do expect that microsoft is going to try to be very aggressive on the price though with the lockhart so and then mr pki rounding it out says providing the traditional last question of the week yes here you are do you think that microsoft will be limited in releasing feature uh, features for Windows client and server where everyone is working from home and no lab environments can be configured for device hardware testing. Well, it's interesting you bring this up. So what he's talking about is, hey, everybody's working from home. 50,000 plus Microsoft employees are working from home. Everybody's separated. Despite the fact that Teams is the be all, save all hero, you do need some hardcore testing to ship an, a Windows update to a, well, now billion uh, Windows 10 PCs around the globe. It's tough business. It's not easy to do. And you can imagine that even if you only have 1% of 1 billion PCs screw up, uh, that's still a major slice of the market. So uh, what he's getting at here is, is this going to slow down the release of features for Windows client? It very well could have an impact. It's let, Let's put it this way. I think it's very fair to say that this work from home scenario is not going to expedite uh, feature releases in Windows 10 because to his point, it's going to be tougher to get into the testing, to get all the rigorous testing done, make sure everything's happy, copacetic across the environment. Now, keep in mind that I'm not really expecting any major features in Windows 10 to be released this year. Microsoft has really, really pushed the um, the backend stabilization model for Windows 10 for this year. And so we're going to see a lot of things on Windows 10 X, but Windows 10, we'll just call it vanilla for right now. I wasn't expecting any major updates to begin with. It's a good, it's a good thought to think about, hey, if Microsoft can't test these things easily, now, Microsoft, I guarantee someone from Microsoft will chime in uh, and message me and say, hey, look, we can still test it all remotely. That's fine. I, I fully understand that. But when you got to man the labs, you got to man the labs. And so Microsoft is telling people to stay home. So just like all of you should be staying home and just like I'm staying home. And hopefully everybody listening to this is happy and healthy. And today's show is brought to you, or podcast, I keep saying, uh, is brought to you by Microsoft 365 in the modern workplace. You can find all in that information down in the description below. Stay happy, stay healthy. We'll catch all of you right back here next time.